Would you fight in World War III? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Why would I get involved in such a bullshit scheme? Big money scheme. Why? Listen, it, when World War III happens, it'll be because we did not stop it from happening. It'll be because we uh, facilitated a bunch of bullshit that let it happen. For example, uh, people want to make money off weapons. Oh, Germany, make more guns, more weapons. Europe, spend more money on military. Oh, let's do naval exercises right next to Russia. Oh, let's mess with the Chinese. Let's help arm Japan. Let's mess with the Chinese even more. Oh, uh, Russia, you don't want us to to do military exercises next to your country? Well, who gives a damn? We're going to do it with, with your neighbor, Ukraine. We're going to facilitate a coup right next door. We're going to do all this bullshit. Like, well, why are you guys doing this bullshit? Because of some power thing? Oh, and who's going to suffer at the end of the day? Who's going to suffer at the end of the day? It's not going to be these fat bastards, these fat pieces of garbage. It's not going to be them. They're going to go eat breakfast in the in the Cayman Islands somewhere. They're going to go to, uh, to uh, the Cook Islands. They don't give a shit. The people who are going to freaking suffer are the average people. So I'm going to go fight for my country. I'm going to go fight. Why? Because I'm a patriot? Fuck that. No, that's bullshit. It's bullshit, guys. It's all big money scheme. People are making money off of it. During World War II, big companies were making big money off of it. They were companies who were profiting on both sides during World War II. You can read about it. Go read about um, IT&T and what IT&T was doing. They were selling their technology to the Americans, and they were selling it to the Germans at the same time. They could make money. Go look up uh, so uh, Sosthenes Ben. Sosthenes Ben, this dude, absolute bastard, founder of IT&T. This guy loved Hitler, by the way. Loved Hitler. Oh, when Hitler first got elected in Germany as the as the chancellor, oh, he loved him. He loved Hitler. He's a big fan, big big fan of Adolf Hitler. And during World War II, while all the young men were being killed, being mowed down by the millions, he's making money on both sides. Making money to be made. And you want to be a tool and say, I'm going to go fight for some what? Some bullshit false flag? It's bullshit. Absolute bullshit. Oh, I'm going to go fight. You have these people in America. I want to go to Israel and help the Israelis. Why? Oh, because we have to go fight terrorism. T you, you moron. You tool. You stupid tool. Don't you know that for so many years? Who was supporting Hamas? It was Iran. It was the Israeli government. Who was supporting Hamas for all these years? Was it not Netanyahu's various administrations who were supporting Hamas? And now what? We have to go fight them? Because we have to go fight the monster that you created? The world has to go, the whole world has to go to war because, because of the monster that you created? The Middle East is the mental asylum of the world. They want to drag the whole world into their insanity. They want to drag the entire world into their insanity. Why? Because you guys created a monster. And why did you guys create this monster? Oh, so we can keep the Palestinians fighting the Israelis. Why? Because then the Israelis have a reason to go to war. Well, why would they want that? Mm, I don't know. Maybe it's the fact that there are various Israeli defense companies that are on the top 100 list of most successful defense companies. There's money to be made, profit to be made. And what happened during October the 7th? These poor Israelis were being kidnapped by these gremlins from Gaza. And what happened? The Israeli helicopters were watching their people running away and they were mowing down their people. They were mowing down their people. And back in, what was it, 2014? During, what was it? I think it was called Operation Protective Edge. What happened? There was some Israeli soldier... His name was, his last name, uh, uh, Haydar Golden, was kidnapped by Hamas. And what did Israel do? They said, let's bomb the shit out of Rafa, because that's where he was kidnapped. Let's bomb the shit out of Rafa in the hopes of killing Haydar Golden. In the hopes of killing their own guy. So instead of sending, I don't know, special forces guys with the, you know, goal, instead of just going full out, I don't know, Call of Duty with the thermal vision, the night goggles, and going in there and finding Golden and killing the bad guys and taking Golden out of there. Instead of doing that, they said, let's just bomb the shit out of the neighborhood and let's, let's kill Golden. Those Israelis running away because Hamas attacked the kibbutz? Let's kill them. 
Oh, Hamas is planning on a big terrorist attack. Let's move the troops away from the fence and put them in the West Bank. And you want to fight for this country? Are you a moron? You have these Americans saying, I want to go to Israel and I want to fight for Israel. Then you're an idiot. If you really believe that, you are a moron. It's awful how they treat their own people. It is awful how countries treat their own people. And here's one thing I was thinking about. All political battles are proxy wars. They are. All political battles, factional battles, everything. They're all proxies. Proxies between rich people. It's the, tr it's the truth. Think about it. Uh, ben Shapiro. Who, 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 who was the one, who, or I should say, who were the ones who greenbacked the creation of the Daily Wire, one of the biggest, if not the biggest conservative media outlet in the world right now. Who was the guy? Who, who were the guys who greenbacked? Go, go look it up. The Wilkes brothers. The Wilkes brothers greenbacked the entire, found, the, the entire founding of the Daily Wire. Who are, who are the Wilkes brothers? They're evangelical billionaires. And they're heretics. They don't believe in the Trinity. They started their own cult. They bought hundreds of, the, like 200,000 acres of land in Idaho. And then they put this property in Idaho. And then they actually blocked a public road like they owned the damn place. Well, they're the ones who greenbacked, who financed the creation of the Daily Wire. Evangelical billionaire cultists. And listen to them talk. Listen to the Wilkes Brothers talk. They're talking about their political beliefs, their ideology, how America is, is decaying morally. We have to do something about it. So they believe that America is decaying, morally speaking, and they need to do something about it. So what do they do? Fund the Daily Wire, fund uh, other conservative groups, whatever. Oh, fund the, 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 uh, fund the uh, Prager University. Yeah, who, funds, who, who, funded, uh, who funded the creation of, of Prager University? The Wilkes Brothers. Go look it up. These, these are the, the George, see, they talk about George Soros all day. They don't talk about the Wilkes Brothers. The Wilkes Brothers. So they have their proxies. Their proxies are who? Uh, ben Shapiro, he's a proxy. Uh, the, the, uh, the Daily Wire, PragerU, these are their proxies. Okay, and then, you have, and, then you, and, then, and then you have the Republican billionaires and all that who are funding Trump. Why? Because Trump is their guy. He's their proxy. And then you have the Democrat, well, the wealthy Democrats. They're funding their own operations against the Republicans. These are proxy wars. Political, they're political proxy wars between billionaires it's all proxy wars every war be it political or be it ideological or be it on the battlefield all wars are proxy wars they're all proxy wars and if they're not proxy wars they're business opportunities bottom line they're business opportunities it's all it is about making money and you raise a child up from infancy all the way up to, to, to when the child is in his 20s. And they say, oh, the guy needs to go fight for his country in some bullshit war that we could have prevented. No, no, he's going to go fight for his country now. And then what? He's going to die. And then what? What are you going to do after he dies? What are you going to do after the war? What are you going to do? What are you going to do, you bastards? What are you going to do? You're going to go, you're going you're gonna to bring scientists from the enemy and bring them to America and give them nice, comfortable houses and then pay them hundreds of thousands of dollars in annual salaries in the name of... So, so my son died in what, Normandy Beach for that bullshit? My son died in, 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 in France? My son died in Italy for this bullshit? Go read about the, how the Americans liberated Rome. Go read about it. There was this area near Rome where the Americans had a big-ass battle with the Germans. you know how many Americans died in this battle? It was like 8,000 Americans dead in one battle. People say, people say, oh, uh, the, Soviet Union, the Soviet Union did most of the fighting. That's correct. The Soviet Union did most of the fighting. But let's not make little of the sacrifice that Americans made. Let's be real here. Imagine one battle, 8,000 dead. What's 8,000 people? Normandy Beach, 3,000 dead. What's 3,000 people? Think about it. Try to wrap your head around what 3,000 people look like. What does is, what is 5,000, 8,000 people look like? Wrap your head around that. Just wrap your head around that. 8,000, one day, battle. Life is nothing. It's meaningless for these people. They don't give a shit. It's nothing. Life means nothing. There's no sacredness to life. There's no sacredness to life. They don't give a shit. Oh, and they'll invoke God, and they'll bring up the Bible, and read the Bible, and all this stuff. It's all just a show. It's a charade. It's all a big charade to make you feel better about yourself. 
Now, if they did a war against the Germans and they messed the Germans up and they took those scientists who were doing war crimes and they executed those bastards, I would say, yeah, good, good riddance. But that's not what happened. They got these horrific scientists who did horrendous human experiments and they brought them to America and gave them, where, where was the justice? Where was the justice? Where's the justice? There's no justice. It's bullshit. Werner Von Braun? Werner Von Braun was a slave owner. He was running a slave operation. Werner Von Braun was running a slave operation. Thousands of people died under his watch. Yes, this is Faraji. Farage, Farage. Thousands of people died under his watch. They say, well, Werner Von Braun, he was simply running a war camp because he was trying to make a big rocket to, to, get, to hit the British. Read about the slave operation that he was running. You're talking about people who were worked to death. The people were worked to death. You woke up super early in the morning. They gave you barely anything to eat. And you worked for hours and hours and hours and hours. And if you collapsed in exhaustion, they gave you a beating. They gave you a beating. And people died. People, Thousands of people died. For what? So some big-ass rocket can be made. Then the Americans said, well, what if we make a rocket so big we can go up to the moon? That'll show the Russians. Oh, yeah, we'll make a big rocket. So they put this murderer, this mass murderer named Werner Von Braun, in, uh, in, they, they put him in Alabama, and they had him working for NASA. And there's even a big museum in Alabama dedicated to Werner Von Braun. And you know what happened? All these sycophants in NASA were saying, I worked with Werner Von Braun, and I will say that he was a good man. Never mind the fact that he was a slave owner. Never mind the fact that he murdered thousands of people. Oh, no, no, who gives a shit about that? He was a good worker. That's what matters. Well, you know what? I get all this stuff, all this Americanism, all this cocksuckery and sycophancy. I give, uh, all I give to this is a giant middle finger. That is it. It deserves nothing but our contempt. It deserves nothing but billions of middle fingers. At least billions of middle fingers. They deserve much worse. I got the book Operation Paperclip. Very good now. Very good book. Very good book. Yeah, I have it here in my library. Very good book by uh, Jacobson. Excellent book. Didn't he win the highest honor? He was he was a part of the uh, part of the SS. Oh yeah, and you can read about these big Japanese companies and what they were doing. Listen, Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi was running work camps, and they their atrocities were done in those work camps. They got all these American POW, American and Dutch POWs. They put them in a cave. They made them work. They put him in a cave, then they buried him alive in the cave. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That was that what happened in a Mitsubishi work camp. And I knew a guy who worked for Toyota, and he told me he says, "Ted, they work you to death." He says, "If they could put me in a slave labor camp, they would do it." And I said, "What do you think happened in World War II? What do you think happened in World War II? It's a bunch of garbage. War." is garbage. War should only be done when it is absolutely necessary. Absolutely necessary. And when you do a war, you kill the evildoers. And do you know why people don't want to join the military? It's not because people are pussies because they're weaklings. It's because people have realized the bullshit. We have the internet. We have all sorts of open source uh, data, all sorts of open source resources in our fingertips. We can look it up in our phones. We're not just dependent on reading newspapers for information. And we see the bullshit. And we realize, wow, life is so short. Why are we gonna waste our time with this bullshit? Why are we gonna waste our time fighting against who? Russia? What, what did Russia ever do to me? We're going to go fight against who? Vladimir? We're going to go fight against uh, Mikhail? We're going to go fight against, uh, I don't know, what's a Russian name? Fedor? I mean, who, who, what's going on? Alexander? Who cares? Well, they've invaded Ukraine. Okay, who gives a shit? They're all the same anyway. Those people all speak the same language. Who gives a shit? Well, they, uh, 
they uh you know they they they're they're gonna they're they're gonna they they they, they you know, Poland's next, ba Baltic states are next. Okay, who gives a shit? Poland's next on the list. They're next. And no country ever looks for their veterans. Yeah, I know. They're gonna they're gonna invade the Baltic states. Why would they want to invade? I don't know. They want to invade the Baltic states. Most people can't even point out the Baltic states on a map. Lithuania. What's the other one called? Lithuania? Estonia? Yeah. Read about those countries' histories, by the way. Go read their countries, those countries' histories during World War II. Go read about what the Lithuanians did to the Polish people during World War II. Go read about them. They're not so nice. Read about them. Read about, go read about the, uh, what was it called? Lithuanian Activist Front. Go read about the LAF. Lithuanian Activist Front. It was a German-backed paramilitary organization. It was a German-backed uh, military, uh, paramilitary organization. They were trained and armed by the, by the Germans in Germany. The Germans sent them back to Lithuania. And then the, uh, when, when, uh, when the Germans controlled Lithuania... A lot of ethnic Poles were living in in the Vilnos region. And do you know what happened? The Germans told the Lithuanians, it's open season on the Poles, do whatever you want. And they butchered thousands upon thousands of people. They killed thousands of people. Thousands of people they massacred. They butchered them. They killed so many people. And they raped and they murdered. It was like something out of an African civil war. They raped and they murdered and they did it every single day. And that was done by the Lithuanians. And has and have Lithuanians talked about this? Has anyone told the Lithuania has APAC ever gone to Lithuania and said, Hey Lithuania, you better you better face the facts. No one gives a shit. Go read about what the Latvians did. Go read about what the Estonians. No, go read about these things. It's true. Estonia, they still praise the SS. Latvia, they still praise the SS. And after, back in, what was it, 19, uh, was it either in the 1990s or in the early 2000s, uh, there were these old SS guys in the Baltic states who said, we demand pension from German government. We demand pension from German government because we fought for you, Germany. And you know what Germany did? This is post-World War II Germany. You know what Germany did? Paid them money. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And what are we doing now? World, you have to understand, I come from a generation where all we heard about was World War II. History Channel, World War II, World War II. Same Pratt Ryan, Schindler's List, World War II, Band of Brothers, Medal of Honor, Frontline. I mean, it was a World War II. We were, we were getting World War II'd up the ass all the time. And then we're, uh, we, look at the, we look at what's happening now. I look at what's happening now. The rest of the, almost everyone's freaking brain dead. But you, we, I look at what's happening now and you see what? Germany is arming themselves. They're, they're spending billions of dollars. They're bringing back mandatory military conscription. I'm like, what the hell is going on? What's going on? Oh, it's coming back. How delightful. How delightful. And, they're, and they brought back Veterans Day in Germany. They haven't had, they haven't had a Veterans Day since, the, since World War II. Now they have Veterans Day. Well, they're not going to praise the Wehrmacht. Who, who the hell are you to stop them? Well, they're not going to praise the Wehrmacht. They're going to praise just Bundeswehr veterans. Why not praise the Wehrmacht? Who's to, who's to say that they're not going to praise the Wehrmacht? Did not the Wehrmacht fight the commies? Isn't Germany indirectly in a war with Ger it, it, with Russia right now? Is not Germany, indirectly speaking, in a war with Russia? Is not Germany the second biggest provider of military aid to Ukraine? So Germany is, indirectly speaking, in a war with Russia. And... Did not the Germans butcher tens of millions of Russians and they're bringing tanks to Ukraine? Uh, uh, just, just, just hear me out. Imagine, hear me out. Hear me out here. Imagine if Germany gave tanks to Gazans. Oh yeah, we're going to go there. Imagine Germany is going to give weapons. They're going to give freaking Glocks. They're going to give H&K firearms 
Rhine metal weapons. They're going to give it to the Gazans. Not only that, they're going to give tanks to the Gazans. They're going to train the Gazans. They're going to import Gazans into Germany. They're going to get. They're going to bring some Gazans into Germany, and they're going to spend about a year training these Gazans on how to ride a tank, how to ride a leopard, leopard two, whatever it's called. Israel would be losing their shit over this. They'd be saying, "I can't believe it, Germany." You did the Holocaust on us, and now you want to do another Holocaust? What gives, Germany? What gives? And you know what? They would have a point. The Germans killed tens of millions of Russians. They bombed. Go look at what the Germans did to Leningrad. They bombed the shit out of Leningrad. They bombed the shit out of Leningrad. And they killed a million people. in Len Over a million people they killed in Leningrad. And hundreds of, thousands of, hundreds of thousands of those people died from starvation. Died from starvation because the Germans had cut the Russians off from food. They cut the Russians off from food. They starved the Russians and they bombed them. Then there was an SS member. His name was Bok Zelensky. I know, right? Bok Zalewski. I know, right? A real German last name. His name was Bok Zalewski. He was a major uh, SS uh, leader. In the Nuremberg Trials, what did Boksilevsky said? He said, when we bombed the Russians and we killed civilians, that was the intention. When we cut the city off from food and we starved them, that was the intention. He said, our intention was to kill as many Slavs as possible, to make room for the Ubermensch and to, to purge away the Untermenschen. I speak a little German. They did a holocaust on the Russians. And what are they doing? They're giving tanks and weapons. They're the second, after America, the Germans are the biggest providers of weapons and military technology to the Ukrainians. Why don't they go help the Gazans? Oh, we can't do that. Well, why not? Well, because uh, it would be very sensitive, very insensitive to back the Gazans in any way against the Israelis. Oh, but you don't mind killing Russians again. Is that what you're telling me? You don't mind butchering Russians again? You want to kill Russians again? Yeah. Yeah. It's bullshit, guys. It's absolute bullshit. They killed so many Russians. They killed so many Russians. Go read about the siege of Leningrad, what they did. They killed so many people. And after World War II... When, the East, when Eastern Germany and Western Germany were united... Or were about to be united... The Poles went to the the Poles went to Helmut Kohl, and they said, "Hey, Paul, uh, hey Germany, I know you guys are going to unite and everything. You're going to bring the the East back into the into the German fold. Can you give us? Can you please give us a guarantee that you're not going to invade Poland again? Do you know what Helmut Kohl did? Helmut Kohl." refused he refused to give that guarantee yep i have i have it right here i have the, the sentence right here here it is when the prime minister of poland tadeusz mazowiecki asked Kohl to vow that germany will never try to retake polish territory after reunification Kohl refused well this is germany they're they're different they're like nice people now oh but they couldn't guarantee the Poles that they wouldn't invade them again. Now they're giving tanks and weapons to the Ukrainians. And we all know what's going to happen. We all know what this is going to lead to. It's going to, I'm telling you, there's going to be another Reich. I've said this a billion times and I'll keep saying it. I'll read your guys' comments. Yeah, go read about the Estonians. Go read about what the what the Estonians do. They they still praise the SS in those countries. They still praise the SS. And now we're here. Oh, we need the Baltics. They're our friends. Got to help them. They praise the SS in these countries. And they hate the Russians. They hate the they do. Not all of them, but a lot of them do. Crazy, absolutely crazy. How do you how do men have the ability to do something that evil? We can't explain it. It's inexplicable. They try to explain it with psychology. They try to explain it with with by, by looking at genetics, we, we cannot fathom evil. We can't. We cannot fathom evil. We just, we can't do it. 
we will, and I don't think the only way that you can actually fully wrap your head around evil is if you believe in the existence of God and Satan. If you believe in the existence of Satan, then you know why evil exists because it's something, see, we cannot fathom it because it is something that is outside of ourselves. Evil is something that is completely outside of ourselves. We can't fathom it. It's outside of our understanding. It's something I believe that enters a human being. It enters a human being. It's a demonic influence. We cannot fathom it. We can't fully understand it. Psychologists will say, well, it's because they're sociopaths. Okay, but why are they sociopaths? You can't explain it. You can't explain how this shit begins. Well, actually, it's the, the brain. Okay, well, how does that happen? How does that happen? We cannot fathom evil. We can't fathom how somebody can go and rape a woman and then murder her and rip her eyeballs out and uh, and and go and murder her father and then force the kids to watch as they murder uh, some guy, force kids to watch as they murder those kids' father. Like we, we can't fathom why. And then and then and then after after they do all this this butchery and this evil stuff, then they go home and they sleep perfectly fine. How do you explain that? How do you explain that shit? You can't explain that scientifically. That is something that is supernatural. It is outside. It's metaphysical. It's just outside. Well, we have the brain here, and we the, the associate. It's in the brain. What, 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 what's in the brain? What? The, the, an apple fell on their head. What happened? Now, I believe that they are people who are evil from childhood. I believe that because I was a child once, and let me tell you, I hung out with other kids. And they were kids who were freaking evil. I mean, I know. They were kids who were evil. Oh, yes. And why were they evil? No idea why. You know, no idea why. Something to do with the parenting, I think. I love how Theo 